And I think Coach Kruger is on the line right now. Coach, are you there? Hi, hi, Craig. Hi, Andrew. How are you guys? What's going on? First of all, 12 yeah. minutes late to the meeting. What kind of fine is that in the locker room? <laughs> I, I won't blame it on anybody, but uh, I definitely – Definitely would have been on the call if I wasn't on another, but uh, it's good to hear you and uh, at least know that I'm speaking to uh, the passionate fans that we have in Buffalo. So what are you doing, Coach? I mean, are you contacting with your players? What are you doing to pass your time in this crazy time? Well, for sure, there's, uh, you, need, you need to put some structure in your day. I mean, we all went into a serious withdrawal on the day that the – Plug got pulled back in Montreal, and the shock of all that is, is and the speed with which everything happened was was astounding. I mean, it wasn't day by day; it was hour by hour. And I think everybody, everybody has felt the impact of of what you know this virus is doing to our environment. But I'm, yeah, I'm training, trying to trying to stay fit. I'm also uh, in touch with the coaches uh, on two two levels. One is potentially being ready for a mini camp if we're called to return and play some games. And the other is to, you know, analyze how we can, when that time comes, strengthen our players and their process because we didn't really get proper, a uh, proper end or exits to the, to the season yet. So let's, let's see which way it goes at the moment. We're, we're holding on to the hope that there still will be some hockey played. And uh, until that happens, we, we won't take the next step, but, yeah, just just doing some things like that. Obviously, making sure uh, my family's safe and, and in a, in a good place. Uh, staying in touch with friends, and of course, very curious how things are going in Buffalo, and making sure that everybody's fine there, and uh, and doing the best they can to to manage this situation. Have you been in contact personally with all your players, and you know? These guys all in quarantine, all in their homes. Have you been in contact with them to just kind of give them updates, obviously, and to kind of go over their training regiments and how they're going to try and stay fit through this time? Well, at the moment, there's, there's, not, a, there's, there's not a high level of coaching going on. We wanted to wait the first couple of weeks out. Everybody knows that they need to stay fit, and the communication has been taking place here with text messages and uh, you know, I've been in touch, especially with the leaders, and and it's branching out where everybody knows. You know, some of them have have easy access to training uh, in in a safe way. Some of it's more difficult. Like here in Europe, I have to tell you guys, there are areas in Europe where if you went for a run right now, you know, you'd be in big trouble or getting on a bike. People would uh, would 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 stop you, and you can't even do exercise. So. Uh, outside of your home so it's, it depends on where you are on the planet right now but the guys uh, understand that, that just keeping an aerobic base right now we would need a re-entry nobody can get on the ice where they are so uh, you know we would need a mini camp re-entry phase but you know let, let's let's wait out these first few weeks and start feeling some tendencies here and then once the final decisions from the NHL are made we'll move forward I know that we'll get some time either way to to prepare because this isn't even if we did re-enter it's not going to happen overnight but the guys are staying in shape as best they can um and um yeah the rest as we all know is an unknown coach Kruger joining us on the uh, on the line here obviously instigators radio only um and uh, you're doing a webinar wednesday 400 plus coaches nine european hockey federations from all over the world uh, you get nervous for that, and and uh, you know what what brought you to to be the one to do that. Well, what's happened is the NHL Coaches Association really has taken off in the last decade, and uh, we we in general are looking for vehicles where we can give back to 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 coaches, especially in the development phases of coaching, where uh, the game still continues to have opportunity of growth. And uh, when I was asked actually uh, a couple of uh, months ago uh, this webinar was already set up now it's falling in a strange time where nobody's actually actively coaching but you know we make more people on the call and it's a you know there's a tool on the uh, through the internet where albition 
and uh, they'll be watching through Toronto, through the NHL Coaches Association. So, no, I'm not nervous about experiences as a coach, and, uh, you know, I'm pretty transparent when I talk about the things that I think are important, and hopefully I can add some value to each coach listening on the call. You know, the game of hockey has developed in an amazing way over the last uh, few decades. I think we're, you know, as far as speed and athleticism, uh, and you know, just the dynamic nature of the game, it, it, it's 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 still got uh, it's still got more more room to grow if we if we get it right at the youth level. And so I I love spending time with coaches like that and giving back, uh, which which we really don't usually have time to do during the season. But uh, yeah, it'll be it'll be a fun thing. Ralph, how are you how are you chosen uh, to be? Uh you know, on this, uh, this call, 400 coaching coaches around the, the world, uh, nine European hockey federations. Like how are you chosen to be on this, uh, this list of 400? Yeah, well, it's definitely my international background. They, uh, you know, they had like, as an example, Bruce Cassidy spoke to the ECHL coaches last week and you've got, you've got different coaches doing different specific areas and, you know, my international as everybody knows, I, I come through the international uh, world, uh, you know, being at multiple world championships, Olympic Games, coaching in different countries here in Europe. I understand where these coaches are coming from and, you know, what the opportunity is because it's also a lot of them are coaching players that are hungry to become National Hockey League players, yet they play in Europe where the ice surface is a lot bigger. Uh, you know, it's two meters wider or six feet wider on each side. And, um, and, and, you know, just the way the game is played, uh, the, the more physical nature, the time and space is tighter in North America. And I'm going to give them some tips on things they can even train with the players here in Europe to help better prepare them to go after that dream when they get older, bringing that game more between the dots. I always say in North America, you know, we naturally play between the dots a lot more than in Europe. The game seems to fall outside the dots into the corners falls uh, into the wide area of the rink and uh, that's just an example of, of something where I'll, I'll be able to help these coaches uh, just prepare their players better to to go after that dream of the National Hockey League. Uh, my question is what kind of credentials do you need to get in? I'm just I'm asking for Craig because I saw you can't see Craig's face but he was bummed when you said it was maxed out and all he's been talking about the last few days was how can he get in? And I asked him, I think he thought that his 923 regular season NHL games and his coaching record at the Buffalo Junior Sabres would have qualified him into the 400. Greg, Greg I'll make sure I get you a link. I'll, I'll get you a link, but you know what? The other thing we could do is next time I'm in Buffalo, we could just uh, we could do a brainstorm and just increase your – your uh, your experiences, and you can you can you can you can ask them off the off the air questions. <laughs> now now we're talking. I like how you said. I like how you said ask some off the air questions because the on the air questions aren't very good, are they, Coach? <laughs> <laughs> They're really good. It's really good. Again, you could you very could you help us contact. in communicating with with the world on what would be some good questions to ask? <laughs> No, you guys, you you definitely uh, you definitely tap into the, the the right nerve right now because in the in this world of disarray, it's good to have a smile once in a while still. And uh, and uh, your questions are fine, guys. They're they're good. <laughs> it's always fun being on your show. Uh, I I don't. So you talk about Europe and you talk about um, the way the game is played inside the dots and outside the dots. And I I watched. I was talking to Craig last week. I watched; he was on NBC, and I, I don't take you for much of a TV watcher. I, I don't, I don't know if you watch a lot of TV, but maybe documentaries. Have you seen the Russian Five? You know what? I haven't seen that yet, and I, it, it would be a good thing to watch as we're all quarantined in our homes. But uh, I have not seen that one yet. But I, you know, one of the first coaches that I ran across when I became a coach. And uh, I'm going to date myself here. I started player coaching in uh, 1989. And uh, one of the first coaches I had the honor of playing against, the team I was coaching, we had an exhibition game against the, the Red Army of Moscow and Tikhonov was the coach on the other side. 
so um, I, I was able to not only play against them in the early 80s with the German national team, but I coached against him and uh, had, through a translator, multiple conversations with him uh, in and around that game where uh, that whole block thinking and the group of five and the synergy they were able to create, it's, um, it's, actually, it's actually something worth thinking about. Yeah, I, I just thought it was fascinating just from, you know, stylistically how when, when Detroit put them all together, how they just, they went out, they, they would roll in their five-man units, and they, it was just, it was fascinating because I don't think anyone had ever seen five on one line uh, before coming to the NHL, and, and you get to hear Scotty Bowman talk about it, and, um, you know, it's, it's just, it's an amazing, if you get a chance, I would highly recommend it, but I, I just can't believe you were able to see yeah, I will. Ticking off and all those teams. Like, who else was on that team? Like, like uh, was Tretiak still playing then, or was he closer yeah, to being yeah. done? Yeah, when, when I played for Germany, I was actually uh, – I played for Germany at the World Championships in 1986. And while the World Championships were on, Chernobyl happened in the Ukraine. And uh, it was an amazing experience to be a part of. And, you know, the at that time it was Larinoff. Krutov, Makarov, Kasatonov, Fedosov, and Trechak. So that block of five plus Trechak in the net were the drivers, and uh, and and the Russians won won the world tournament at home that year. While Chernobyl was actually going on, it happened at the end of April, and the World Championships ended at the beginning of May. We didn't even know Chernobyl had happened while we were playing the tournament because of the news blackout that they they had. So um, we as players, when we found out actually became instant friends. You know, it was only eight countries at the World Tournament at that time, and you can imagine us finding out about Chernobyl and not sure whether the wind had blown to the east or the wind had blown to the west, whether we'd been hit or not hit. And so I got to know those guys on a whole different level, and I actually remained uh, in contact and friends. And Larinoff, Igor Larinoff and I still have contact to this day uh, on a regular basis, and he, he came to visit me at the World Cup, and and, um, you know, with Fedosov, I had quite a bit of contact in his political role that he had in Russia. So, so uh, a friendship was actually born a long, long time ago in 1986 with those guys. So when you speak about the Russian five, I, I had an um, interesting, interesting past with them. Well, it's, just, it's just amazing. I ask you about a documentary, and it's not just a show to you. It's just it's real life. So it, it's just it's kind yeah. of just... Showing us again how much better you are than we are, Coach. <laughs> no, it's not better. I just, I just uh, experienced a lot of things going, going down all these different channels. And all, all of it thanks to hockey. All of it thanks to our great game, guys. Have you, okay, well, let me ask you this. Have you seen the Chernobyl show? You know what? Believe it or not, my wife and I were just beginning to watch it. And uh, we thought we were going to be in Buffalo for a while, but then, you know, the NHL lifted the restrictions for, for people based in Europe to go home to their families, and, you know, the, the Pagulas and Jason Botterill just embraced that right away, and they said, Ralph, you know, go to your family, and, um, and, and so we were actually just going into part three, so it's, it's something I'll finish watching when I get back into our home in Buffalo. Oh, amazing. It's an amazing documentary. Enjoy your time. Good luck with the webinar, and uh, hopefully we can chat with you soon and see you back on the ice coaching. Yeah, Craig and Andrew, I just I just want to wish all all the fans out there really be safe, be smart, and um, you know stick together. At the at the other end of this, hockey is going to be very very important. Sports is going to be important. The Buffalo Sabers are going to be a great place for us to to all come together and uh, and 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 realize. The, the things we have that, that are that are that are really special and uh, and, and above all our health. So uh, I hope everybody listening stays safe and uh, and moves carefully through these next weeks. And I look forward to seeing everybody again soon in Buffalo. Thank you, Coach. We'll talk right. to you soon. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much for the call. Okay, take care. Bye.